Hello, I'm Ali for edu for java and this is Swing tutorial number 3, where we're going to create our first window. Until now, we have been working with dialogues, which were predefined windows, but now we're going to create our first window from scratch. For this, we're going to copy the code of the tutorial number 3, as we always do from here to the page. And we're going to run it to see. This is uh, what we're going to end up doing. This is how we let's take a look at the code. We're going to comment all the code, Ctrl Shift 7, and we're going to run it to see what it happens. Nothing happens. What this line says is that uh, we create a J in in this line, what we're saying is the JFrame is the window object, but to make it something happen, we have to make it visible. So we uncomment this line, Ctrl C7, to set it visible. What we do with this first line is create a frame object, which will have demo application as the title of the window, and we set it to visible. Let's run it now. Here, this is the window that we've created. The window is created without any content. To be able to see the content, what we do is, in this line, set the size to 300 and 150 pixels. We uncomment it and we run it now. We now see the window a bit bigger, the size we've just set. The next line, uh, to explain this next line, what we're going to do is go to debug perspective. We terminate the programs which are running and we run again our application. We come here, we can see the programs are running, so we terminate them and we run our program again. Here we can see that the program is running, and the problem is that if we close the window, the program is still running. Let's see it in the debugging mode. We run it in the debugging mode. Here we can see a window, and here we can see uh, the different threads running at the same time, just for this window. All of this is the Swing Engine. If you want to know more about threads and the Swing Engine, you can see the tutorials on Java, Java game the development for beginners, which are in the same website. I'm not going to explain it here so that we can keep this tutorial simple. Let's just explain that when we close the window, the program keeps running. To avoid this, we have this instruction, set default close operation, which means that when we close the window, the program finishes. If we run the program with debug, let's do it. Let's uncomment here. And let's run it in debug. We can see all these threads, and here we can see that if we close the window, the program terminates. And if we run it normally, here it is. We can also see that if we close the window, it terminates. Until now, we have learned how the window works. We now want to put components inside the window. To put components inside the window, what we normally do is um, these two lines here. We create a panel in this line here, and with the method add, we add it to the frame. After that, I created a method place component, which I comment here, and in this method I've put one by one the components. We run the program, remember that when we saw the window, we saw that each one of these is a component, user, password, the text fields and the buttons. The layout property is the one which indicates how are the components located in the window. For now, we are going to set layout to null. 
to keep the tutorial simple. We're not going to use layout for now. We're going to put each one of the components giving X and Y for each one of them. Okay, let's comment all the components components except one to see one by one. We're going to use use a label. What we're going to do here is create a label with user user here as text. In the next line we set the bounds to use a label. We first locate it in 10. This is x and this is y, which are the coordinates. Afterwards, we have the width 80 and the height 25. If we run it, we can see user, which is in the position 10, 10. If we create, if we wrote, for example, let's go to German first, 100. And a hundred, and we run it. We can see it's located here in 100, 100. So basically, set bound says in the first two numbers where we are where we are going to locate the label in the width, and then we have the width and the height. So, for example, if we set width to 10 and we run it. We can see that we can't see anything because it doesn't fit. Let's try with 20 and let's put this back to 10 and 10. Let's run it. We can see the U. If we write 50, for example, we can see user. Okay, so until set. To leave everything as it was like that. After creating the user label and setting the bounds, we add it here to the panel. User label, we use the method add to add it to the panel, and this is the result. Here we are. In the next lines, what we do is we add a text field. Comment, Ctrl Shift 7. It is similar to the label, but instead of passing him the text of the label here, the constructor of the text field, we receive the number of characters the user can write inside the text field. We do the same, set bounds, the X position 100, we, we, this will be more to the right if we run it. We can see that it's on to the right, 110. For the height, we have 10. That is the distance from here, the same as the label. The distance from the border to the box is 10 pixels. 160 for the width and 25 for the height. We uncomment these two next. These are similar. This is for password label, password, and this is uh, the text field for password, the same as the ones before. But the difference here is that when we write something in user, it appears, but when we write something in password, we can only see some spots. This is because instead of using a J text field, we use a password field. They are similar, but when we write some spots appear, it is special for when we write passwords so that nobody can see our password. The rest is just the same. We set bounds and we add it to the panel. Let's run it and see what I'm talking about. Here I write anything, and here you can't see the password. See? Okay, we are now going to take a look at the buttons. We create a um, J button. We set the name we want the button to have, logging in this case. We define again where we want it to be. 10, 80, the width and the height. And we add it to the panel. We run it. Here we are. And we see that we have a window 
with our components. We write here edu for Java, for example, and here the, secret, the top secret password, and we press login. Um, it doesn't do anything yet because we haven't programmed anything for it to do it. Register is the button to register us in any application. We would go to a form where we would register us in. But for this tutorial, it's more than enough. So, see you in the next tutorial. Bye.